I've been doing some extensive testing on solar generators lately, and I retested the DJI Power 2000, and I have over 50 different data points on this system, and some of them really surprised me. So I wanted to go over them with you in this video. That way, if you're looking at getting the Power 2000, you'll know if it is really the right fit for you. My name is Ben. This is the Minuteman Solar YouTube channel. This is a solar generator or what some people will call a power station. But did you know that in a system of this size, you could have 3000 watts of output power? So if you're looking for essential backup power, meaning fridge, freezer, lights, fans, small devices that are just essential for backup power, or if you're going camping, doing some over overlanding, or if you just need portable power on the go that has a really large inverter and a solid battery, then the DJI Power 2000 is what fits that category. Now in my testing, 3000 watts was very easy to run on the DJI Power 2000. I was actually able to run more than that, consistently about 3200 to 3300 watts before this would shut off. But one of the things that was super weird to me is that nowhere in any of the documentation is it listed what the peak output is of this inverter. So when you turn on a water pump, for example, there is a huge surge of energy and then it comes back down and levels off and keeps running at that continuous rate. So I've tested this on different appliances and I've been able to surge up to about 4,500 watts. So I'm guessing that's what the peak output is for the inverter. There are only four AC outlets and one of them is an RV plug. So all of these are 120 volt. This one is a 30 amp style called a TT. 30 but you'll only be able to get out about 25 to 26 amps out of it. When you see an outlet that has this little sideways mark on the smiley face per se of the outlet, that means it's actually rated to 20 amps. So the other three outlets here are 20 amp outlets. And when you turn this on, you get that DJI chime. But when you go to turn on the AC output, if you just click it, then this will slowly flash. And what that means is after 30 minutes of no power coming out of this, it's going to shut itself off. So if you turn this off and then turn it on while holding the AC button, you're going to get another beep, but now this is going to be a solid green light, meaning that these will stay on no matter what. But one of the most underrated things that people don't look at with solar generators is the idle power consumption and the efficiency of the inverter. And I was very surprised to find out that this is only 20 watt hours per hour. But I did a 0.3C discharge on this, and a 0.3C discharge just means 30% of the battery capacity is the load that I put on here. So I put about a 600 watt load on this, and the battery capacity is 2,048 watt hours. But one thing that they don't advertise anywhere that I think they are absolutely missing the ball on is that this will do less than 10 milliseconds with its transfer using it as a UPS. Meaning, say I've got a computer or some type of sensitive electronics plugged into this, and then this is plugged into my wall outlet. If the power goes out and my wall outlet loses power, this will switch over to be running my appliance with zero hesitation. This is by far one of the fastest UPSs that I've ever used. So the UPS function is really great. It just stands for uninterrupted power supply, but there's a catch. When you're in UPS mode, you're limited to how much you can draw from this and still be charging from the grid. So there's two limitations here. If you have this as a UPS, you're only gonna get about 800 watts to go into here, according to the user manual. But when I'm charging it and running stuff, I seem to get more than 800 watts. But it will kick out of UPS mode if I pull more than 1200 watts from the outlets. All that means is that if I'm using less than 1200 watts, this is going to continue running off of grid power technically, but if it goes above that, then it's actually gonna to switch to be running off of the battery directly. One thing that was really interesting to me is that when I started doing my discharge testing, this was at 120 volts when it was full. By the time I drained this down to almost 0%, the voltage was at 110 volts. Generally speaking, it's preferred that you have a flat voltage all the way till zero. You want that voltage to stay and then right when it reaches zero percent, it drops down. But I noticed with this, depending on the state of charge, that basically when it was at 30 percent, that I was closer to about 113 volts. But if you need this in a very tight space, such as when you're camping, overlanding or sleeping next to it, if this has a load less than about 600 watts, you can't hear it running. The fans are essentially silent. When I use my sound decibel meter, if I was even just five feet away, it wouldn't even read or register on the sound meter. It's only once you start pulling a lot more energy or if you're charging really fast from solar or from a wall outlet, 
then you can get as high as about 60 decibels. That's what I found in my testing. Keeping in mind, a normal conversation is usually around like 80 decibels. So this is whisper quiet even when it's being as loud as possible. So I plugged my refrigerator into this. It's fully stocked and using it just like normal. We changed nothing about our habits with using our fridge. And I got 16.7 hours of nonstop runtime from this. So in the end, I was able to use 1.48 kilowatt hours of capacity which is basically 75% of the battery using it to run my fridge. Now, because DJI is primarily a drone company and they've been expanding from there, they have multiple USB-C options. Now, these USB-A here will max out at 24 watts between all of these, which in my opinion is pretty low. You can get as high as 18 watts from a single USB-A output, but there are two 65 watt USB-C and two 145 watt USB-C. Now the battery is 2048 watt hours and is lithium iron phosphate. That means you should expect to get more than 4,000 cycles from this before it reaches 80% efficiency. If you wanted to minimize the wear and tear on a battery, you can use their proprietary SDC ports right here and add expansion batteries. And you can add up to 10 expansion batteries just to this single unit. And every expansion battery also has two SDC ports. So I wish you could use any generic battery and plug it into here, but it doesn't work that way because this has built-in communication. This measures about 18 inches across, about 13 inches tall, and nine inches deep. The only place that you're gonna be plugging anything in is on the front. So the sides, the back, all of this is smooth. There are no other connections on here. And at only 49 pounds, this is something that people will take car camping and overlanding because it's easy to move around. I definitely wouldn't go backpacking with it. It's way too much power for that. But in my opinion, it's light enough that pretty much anybody can carry it by themselves. The fastest charge rate that I got into this was 1800 watts. But the only way you can get the 1800 watts is if you're using the app because the standard high input right here, which is this little switch being pushed up, is 1400 watts. If you push this to the down position, it'll drop down to about 1100 watts. So it's adjustable within the app. I do like the fact that they have this right here because sometimes I have to charge this on a circuit that's already running other things. And if I start pulling a lot of power to start charging this up, it will end up tripping the breaker. One major downside though of the DJI Power 2000 is there is no built-in solar charge controller. There's no spot to just plug in solar panels and let it charge up. You have to get an external charge controller and that I dislike. That said, the external charge controller will do up to 1800 watts because it has a 1200 watt input and a 600 watt input. And in my testing with that unit previously, I was able to get about 1100 watts into the 1200 watt input. And then if you put enough panels on the 600 watt input, I can get up to 600 watts, but I had to put 800 watts onto it in order to get the 600 watts. All that means is if you do your solar panels right, you can get a true 1700 watts of solar to go into this, which is really fast for a unit of this size. The biggest thing that I dislike about the solar charge controller is that the 1200 watt input is rated up to 60 volts and 20 amps, whereas the 600 watt input is rated to 45 volts, even less, but up to 43 amps. That's an insane amount of amperage just to try to get 600 watts in my opinion. But the thing that also sets DJI apart is that because they're using these SDC ports, you can get all sorts of special adapters, including alternator chargers, the extra solar charge controller, and many more things. So on one hand, it's a limitation to have just two SDC ports, but in the other hand, it's a great benefit because if you're not using solar and you wanna charge off your car really fast, you have the option. You don't get that option with other solar generators. I like to use either the Bougie RV 200 watt bifacial solar panels, or there's another brand called Cal Sun. It's basically exactly like the Bougie RVs. You can get those on Amazon. I don't have any affiliate links for you. I'm not trying to make money off of this or anything. It's just the panels that work best because their max voltage is about 27 to 28 volts. So you can put two of them together and have that as 400 watts to go into the solar input. Then you just put more groups of two together to get your 1200 watts or your 600 watts, whatever you need. But if you're solar charging and wall charging at the same time, you're gonna be limited to 2300 watts. One thing that I disliked is that this doesn't have a dark start option. Meaning if this runs down to 0% while running stuff at night, the solar panels won't turn it back on. Additionally, just plugging in a wall charger doesn't seem to turn it back on by itself. I have to plug one of those in and then push the power button. Doing that seems to be the only way to tell the unit to start charging. So if it drains down to zero, make sure you turn it on so that way the chargers can start working. Now the fact that this has a 2048 watt hour battery, 
3000 watt inverter, which is very large for a unit of this size. Plus the fact that you can get 1800 watts of solar input. Those specs are actually really nice. But what about the price? At a total price of $1,299, this is decent. It's definitely cheaper than a lot of other units out there for what you get. I personally disagree with just finding out the price per watt hour on the battery because a solar generator is not just a battery. You're not paying for just a battery. You're also paying for an inverter and all of the programming and all of the other things that are inside of it. So what I do is I factor the inverter, battery, and solar. Taking all of that information combined compared to the total price, that's what I call a whole watt price because it's factoring those three things which make a solar generator. And this comes out to only 60 cents per whole watt. Now on my free solar generator comparison chart, I also do compare the price per watt hour against all of the other systems that are of a similar size. So click the link down below to get my free solar generator comparison chart. You don't even have to sign up for anything. It's all there for you to use as much as you want. Now there are a couple other units that are similar to this, including the Opez Mega 2, which is one that I have here. And that one's only $849. It also has expansion batteries, has built-in solar input, but it only has about a 2,500 watt inverter. So the inverter is bigger on this, but the batteries are the same. And you have to buy an extra solar charge controller for this in order to get the maximum solar input. At that point, it's all fairly similar. So I highly recommend finding a coupon code. If I have any, I'll have them in the links down below. That way you can get a lower price on this. So that way it's a little bit more fair comparison to other things on the market. Same with the E2000 LFP. That's another similar unit with similar specs and that's about $720. So this is definitely on the higher end but you're going to get features that you're not going to get in the others such as the larger inverter, a much better working app, far better customer support, it being very compact and lightweight for its size, and the fact that you can put up to 10 expansion batteries on this. I called their customer service a couple of times trying to get clarifying answers about this system such as what is the peak output of the inverter. They didn't know but outside of that I had a really good experience with their customer service. If you need to get a hold of them their number is 818-235-0789 but they were very helpful semi-knowledgeable, not too knowledgeable. They kept having to ask other coworkers for answers, but either way, they were focused on trying to get me the answers. They just didn't necessarily know them offhand, but they did answer the phone very quickly every time, which means if you have an issue with this unit in the five-year warranty period, that they're gonna take care of you without any question. One other thing that's very rare to find in a solar generator is waterproofing. Now, this is not waterproof by any means, but they do include a special nano coating on all of their internals, to be moisture and water resistant. I dislike the fact that you have to get a external solar charge controller and that you're stuck to using these STC ports. But there was one thing that really did confuse me and talking to customer service, they said there is no fix for it. These outlets put out 50 Hertz power. It's not a deal breaker. Your equipment should work just fine. But here in the United States, we use 60 Hertz frequency with our electricity. So you may see some flickering or some slight variances in how your appliances and electronics work on this. I ran my laptop, I ran my fridge, I ran my TV, I ran all sorts of equipment on this and I've had zero issues with it. It's just something that I noticed and it's weird that there's no fix for it. Even within the app, I think there should be an option to switch between 60 hertz and 50 hertz. So for $1,299, I think this is a good unit. I think it's definitely priced on the high side and I've had zero issues with this unit working for me. You may wanna be considering something more affordable, but you're also gonna be getting lower quality customer service and that's something that can be hard to put a price on. So if you need any help figuring out which system is going to be the best for you all you have to do is write down a list of the things you want to run and then shoot me an email to info at poweredportablesolar.com which will soon be info at minutemansolar.com and i'll be happy to answer your questions and see if we can help you find the right system at the best price if you want to get the dji power 2000 my discount codes and links will all be down in the description below